round two, we need some sound effects here. In one corner, Dr. Mark Faba, the ultimate uh, bear in the other, <laughs> Michael Yoshikami, uh, who uh, just as uh, the bell rang a couple of seconds ago, uh, came out of his corner uh, swinging. And, uh, Michael, you were noticing or pointing out that uh, Dr. Faba was saying, look, uh, long term, you know, he's looking for Armageddon. Short term, he thinks you can still trade the market, and investors need to be aware of this investment time horizon. Yeah, that's very, very important because um, if you look at um, many um, analyst perspectives who are negative on the United States, they said basically things were going to collapse in 2008, 2009. Then they said there's artificial money. Now it's going to be 2003, excuse me, 2013. Now it's going to be 2020. And the question really for investors is, okay, maybe this calamity is out there. Maybe unsustainable debt is out there. We have entitlement programs. But what do you do in the meantime? So it's important when you listen to the headlines, not just to hear doom and then immediately say, I need to go into my cave now. Because if you do that, you're going to have no returns for all of those years. Wouldn't what, you agree? You are absolutely right. That's why I told my readers and a media enterprise in the U.S. on March 6, 2009, buy stocks. Because the worse it becomes economically and geopolitically, the more markets will go up because the more money they will print. So I'm not feeling guilty of, of having said don't touch anything. On the contrary, because I'm so bearish, what you shouldn't own is cash. Cash is going to be a disaster. Uh, okay, okay, Dr. Farber, let's, put, let's pin you down here to some actual strategy. Apocalypse, perhaps yes. not right now, but maybe in the foreseeable future if you take that worst case scenario that you're painting. So what do you do? Do you hole it out in a log cabin with a sawed off shotgun and your stash of gold? What exactly, do you, what exactly should you tell investors? <laughs> no, with a cannon, not a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> and the tank in front of your garage. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm telling you this. Of course, if the disaster strikes, it's very difficult to survive it if everybody else is killed financially because the governments will, of course, take your gold away. But I'm just saying, whatever you do today, it may not last. The market if you print money like in Zimbabwe can go up very substantially but the purchasing power of money goes down and the standards of living go down mm -hmm. and eventually you have either civil war and by the way in the US the mood has turned very very negative among certain groups of society Mark, Mark let me jump in there though. Yes. You've got central banks raising rates. The, you know, the Indian central bank... Well, no, not they in America. Be... They don't raise rates in America. But they're talking about it. They're having a substantive discussion about it. Now, and the people are coming back. The people are packing themselves into, into Best Buy now. The government may be failing the people, but the people aren't failing the people. And I was just in the United Listen, States... Listen, you, know you know why consumption is up? Because people don't pay their mortgages. So they have well, surplus cash. If you don't pay your mortgage, then suddenly you are, you're, for two if you're years. going to go bankrupt anyway, you might uh -huh. have spent as much as you can. Yeah, but see, when you make the statement that people, that's not the case. Most people yeah. are paying their mortgages. Most people True. are working. Most things are okay. okay. It's not carnage in the yes, States. It's not course. Zimbabwe. But uh, still Mark. about 16% of the people in America don't yep. have the jobs they would like to have okay. or are Mark. unemployed. Mark, uh, Mike, hang on to this. Here, you can have that yes. and you can have that. Okay.